All right. Um, so for this week, I read BISC, um, or I guess I read a paper that was uh, accurate estimation of cell composition and bulk expression through robust integration of single cell information. Um, and basically it's a like uh, presenting a method called BISC and uh, also some benchmark evaluations of BISC and other uh, cellular deconvolution methods. Um, I could not figure out why they called it BISC, so hence BISC the soup being here. Um, so uh, the two main goals of this paper were to introduce the method, method BISC, um, which aims to be a method for robust decomposition. Um, well, they call it decomposition, but we have called it deconvolution of bulk RNA-seq data using corresponding single nucleus RNA-seq data. Um, and then their point is that BISC is good at correcting technical difficult technical differences between bulk and single cell sequencing. Um, and they do that by leveraging uh, single cell and bulk data from the same sample if it exists. Um, and then the other, the second point of the paper was why use BISC? Um, so they test BISC versus other four other deconvolution methods over two data sets. So they, and also test for robustness of BISC in a couple of situations with added complexity. And then of course, show us the runtime. Um, so the first figure they show is kind of an overview of how BISC works. Um, so like many cellular deconvolution methods, input is their bulk RNA-seq and a reference single cell RNA-seq that is labeled with cell types. Um, so the two main points in their method um, is that they first calculate um, gene-specific transformations in the bulk data based on statistics, underlying statistics in the single nucleus data. So this is what they're trying to show over here in the um, in this like uh, stack of paper. So each page being a gene. Um, and then basically this top where the, the, blue, the blue distribution is the single cell uh, expression and the red distribution being the observed bulk, they um, use a transformation to get this trans, the bulk data to be more like this yellow curve. So it's more in line with what the um, single cell curve looks like. Um, and then after they have that transformed bulk data, they uh, do decomposition um, using a non-negative least squared regression. Um, so this is uh, from their figure two. So they kind of show a little bit more of what that bulk transformation looks like. Um, so either the method can learn the transformation from samples that overlap or if there aren't overlapping samples, they assume um, that the single cell data has a two distribution. Um, so here they show us, uh, I think it's six samples or from six genes. And there's, um, I think seven samples from each gene. So the assumed bulk, observed bulk um, counts per million is along the X axis. And then the single cell counts for bulks on the Y. So we see that like, there's some correlation, but it's pretty, like it falls off a, a nice correlation line. And then after they use their transformation method, we get a nice one-one correlation. And that's uh, the goal of that step of the method. Um, so then they kind of move on to testing deconvolution methods. And this is something that we've been asking um, as a group was like, how do we see if our deconvolution method worked? Um, so that's like something we're working on with our work with music right now. Um, so basically they have two data sets they use. One is some subcutaneous adipose tissue. Um, and then the second data set is dorsolateral prefrontal cortex or DLPFC. Um, so they're gonna test BISC and then three other methods, music, BS, EQ, SC, um, and CyberSort over these two data sets. Um, and then as they kind of test these different things, they use two, two categories of base truths for their evaluation. So they either check out the ratio of cell types in the single nucleus data, or they check out different biological features that they think will correspond 
with proportions of specific cell types. Okay. Um, so the first thing they do is kind of um, revisit that bulk transformation idea. Um, so this is also from figure two. Um, so what they do is they, this is the adipose data and they just, they pseudo bulk the single cell data so that they like know that the ground truth of the proportions of cells. Um, and then they took it and they introduced variants. Um, so variants introduced to the different data sets is along the x-axis here. Um, and the x-axis like represents gene-specific linear transformations. Um, I don't quite understand all the math behind that, but things get more complex along the x-axis, more different than the single cell, than just the sum single nucleus data. Um, so then they run the different they run the different methods and they get their um, cell proportion estimates. And then what we're looking at here is the correlation of ratio of adipose tissue in the single nucleus data versus the method prediction data. And because it's pseudo bulked, we know that it should be um, one to one. Um, and then here they're showing us Pearson correlation and RMSD. Um, so basically bisque and bulk is on moved by that um, increase in variation where the other methods struggle, the more different um, the bulk data is from the single nucleus data. Um, so then they get a little bit more into like what an actual like, I don't know, like a use case for um, these methods would actually look like, which is just like fully predicting like what is our, what are our cell type proportions. Um, so in figure, figure 3A at the top here, um, again, they're comparing single nucleus data proportions to the predicted proportions of the cell types. Um, so the gray box plots are the proportions of these different cell types in the single nucleus data. And they're comparing that with the predicted proportions from the different methods, which are the other colors. Um, so we see that BISC often is very close to the proportion of the single nucleus data. Um, CyberSort X also does all right. Everything else is kind of elsewhere. Um, so that, but that is like relying on the assumption that like the proportion of that cell type in the singular nucleus data is like the under, like the overlying like distribution of that cell type, which might not be great. Um, and then the second thing that they look at is the proportion of adipose cells um, versus BMI. So they assume that like the more adipose cells, the higher the BMI. Um, so we get some uh, nice little scatter plots here. Uh, oh. And they give us a significant, basically, um, I think that uh, BSeq SC and uh, CyberSort uh, both fail to pre predict any um, failed to predict any of the adipose tissue or the um, T cells, which is why they're missing from these bottom plots here. Um, so we get results only from BISC music and CyberSort X. Um, and then we get results, significant correlations um, from BISC and CyberSort X. So they kind of say like um, BISC and CyberSort like behave, they had predictions that we expected. Um, and then the second prediction they do is there should be a relation between T cells and the Medusa index, which has to do with insulin. Um, so, um, and I think here they expect negative correlations. So, and then again, I think BISC and CyberSort are both able to pick out correlations that are expected. And then, um, they do kind of a similar breakdown for the DLPFC data type or data set. Um, so the single nucleus data proportions versus the predicted proportions up at the top here. Again, uh, single nucleus and gray and then the other methods and other colors. Um, and again, a similar pattern where uh, BISC is usually tracking with the single nucleus proportions. Um, 
and we get some other uh, we get some from the other methods we can get some uh, proportions that are kind of off the mark. Um, so then for their like biological predictor, they use the BRAC stage, which is a proxy for progression of Alzheimer's disease, um, which is on a scale of one to five. Um, so that is here on our X axis. Um, so they expect negative correlation with norm proportions. Um, and actually all methods are able to pick up a negative trend um, as the, the backstage gets higher, we get less neurons. Um, and then everything except for B, uh, the BASIC SC is significant. So things do, um, most methods perform pretty well um, picking out the neuron proportions um, by, this, by this evaluation. And then they also expect positive correlation with microglia versus BRAC stage. Um, and BISC and MUSIC are actually the only ones able to predict that trend. And then BISC is the only significant correlation. Um, so then the two other, a um, couple other points they make. Um, and I thought that this was neat, but they checked out, okay, so like what if we break the rules that we assume? Um, so one thing they do is they violate the assumption that cell type proportions are equally represented in single cell in the bulk data. Um, so they change the, they up and down sample for uh, microglia cells in the single nucleus data. Um, so it's either under or over uh, represented. Um, and then when they ran BISC, they found um, single, uh, the, the, they found that positive relationship with the BRAC stage again. Um, I wish they would have, it would have been cool if they ran that and discussed it with the other methods and see how other, other things do with that change in the input data. Um, they just said that um, BISC was re robust to that. Um, and then the other thing that they did was they added unknown cell proportion to the bulk data. So they incorporated some of the adipose data into the DLPFC bulk data. Um, and then I guess BISC returned um, residuals that kind of like correspond with that unknown. So like, I guess that's also kind of a cool feature for um, like a deconvolution method to have. And then of course, you know, we've got a really low runtime. So it also looks pretty good for BISC. So um, 